All right, everybody, today we are gonna be working on this Aaron Snowblower. This is a Deluxe 24, and it's got a 254cc motor on it. And in this case, what happens a lot, I'm reading, is after some time, this shutoff will break off. And sure, you can use a needle nose pliers or maybe even your hand if you've got small fingers and strong and you can get in there and you can turn it. But what we're going to be doing today is replacing this with an OEM part. And let's see, inside here, that that shaft is new and it's not broken off. We'll be doing that. Part number for you that I got right from the Aaron's dealer is right here. I'll put that in the description. In fact, I don't know actually if this is an OEM or not. It's probably not. So it should work fine. And we'll get started on this. One of the first things that you'll notice is using the standard uh, wrench. And you've got this bolt here, this bolt here, and this bolt here, and this bolt here. So I'll go ahead and start on those. As always, I hit those with some PB blaster, some rust loosener in case it's needed. Let that sit and I'll start taking this cover off here. Okay, jump forward. I've got this bolt, excuse me, this bolt out here. There was no bolt here actually. Um, it's a dead bolt on this model, which is fine, dead opening. I've got that bolt out and got this bolt out. They're all look to be the same size. You'll notice here it's shifting a little bit. Next step, so I'm actually gonna have to come over here, take this one out, take this one out in order to get this panel to come out. But I'm pausing here to record this because you'll notice this little bolt might give you some troubles. Um, might not be able to back that all the way out because it's hitting into the starter. And that should be okay. Should be able to just stay in there. Just take note. You might have to get creative. It's a tight, tight space back in there. All right, on to these last two. Okay, so we got all the bolts off. And you'll just need to get this 90 degree panel off. Pulls off. Stays connected if you got a starter mo motor. And here's our culprit, okay? So what you'll notice is this is going to be a T-valve, on and off T-valve, and goes in the uh, fuel line here. I ran this until it's been bone dry, and I'm hoping that that will alleviate any fuel that will uh, come fl flooding out of here when I disconnect this. You'll also notice that this is kind of on a riser here, so if there is any fuel in there, hopefully it'll be down in the lower part of the fuel. Um, pan or fuel cell but either way just be prepared that this is probably going to drip some fuel down so get your paper towels out there um, down ready to soak that up as well as you might want to have some latex gloves on to help so that you don't stink so bad your preference just a tip though for you okay just in preparation to start disassembling this i've got my paper towels under there as i mentioned to you and what you'll want to know is that that is how that seats there, okay? So eventually you're gonna need to spin this piece off the old, the old piece, preferably. So what I would recommend that you do is disconnect the fuel line first from the old shutoff valve switch and then get the fuel line out of the way. That's again, probably where it's gonna bleed out some of that excess fuel. Um, again, just simply, you're gonna squeeze on these two pins here and get this tension band off first. Get it backed off about an inch or two back here, and then you should be able to pull this whole tube off. I'm making a special note here because if this unit is older, like any other fuel line, uh, if this is factory or standard and old, you do want to inspect this for any kind of cracks, um, leaks, anything like that. Um, a lot of times when these are close to heat and they're old and, you know, a unit that might be 5, 10, 15 years old on any motor, you're going to want to go and, and replace this with an appropriate fuel line replacement. Um, if this looks good, um, at least from here on in, I'll leave that up to you to decide if that is something you just put right back on the shutoff valve. Just showing a quick clip here how I have taken that clip and slid it back off like I mentioned. And then now we need to take this black hose and get it off of the shutoff valve. All right, we're actually learning together as we go along this. I've changed the game plan here a little bit where we're not gonna be taking off the black fuel line uh, from this side. We're actually gonna 
get this fuel shutoff valve off of the fuel tank first. And so what I'd like to point out there is, is all you have to do is back this nut out. But in order to do that, you're gonna to have to hold that unit firmly with one hand and then take your crescent wrench or whatever you're gonna be using and then back that off. And again, you're gonna be going, okay, to the right. Okay, you want that nut to spin to the right to come down. Okay, and then left is what makes it go up. So counterclockwise makes that nut go up, but when you're removing it, you need to go clockwise. Okay, so do that, and then once the old unit is off, then you'll be able to quickly and easily pull that fuel line off. Okay, in the process of going around, I was able to get the hose out and off, and I should just be able to back this off a little bit. Again, it is bleeding some fuel, so. Not any harm, really, but in particular, might not like that smell. Okay, so there we are. Out with the old, now on into the new. All right, old one on the left, new one on the right. This piece is actually threaded, which goes down inside of here. Just wanna thread that in. Finger tight. It's gonna be time to put that in there. And I'd say go 75% of the way, the thread's in there, and then attach your fuel line on there. All right, tip before starting, make sure that nut is all the way down to the bottom and the washer is right up against the nut. And I'll show you why. So it goes up in there. Get that tight. And then you're going to want to finish it off my guess is you'll probably want to put that on here and then wrench tighten that all the way up okay got the shut off valve back in and then as you saw i took this up as high as it would go and then still allowing me to get the hose on and clamp it on. And then you finish it up by tightening that nut and rubber washer inside there all the way up as tight as you can. And then the most critical thing about this step is that that is flush. And the reason being is so that when you put the face plate back on, it comes through. And then again, make sure that it just feels and looks as tight and secure as possible. You certainly don't want that leaking or the hose leaking, as a matter of fact. Um, one little tip, if for some reason you do notice when you take the hose off that maybe it's visibly cracked um, or not even, you can possibly shave off or cut off maybe, I don't know, in my case, a quarter to a half an inch and this hose line will still reach that. Um, but just be careful not to take too much off if you're in that issue. All right, so I put the plate back on, obviously, and hindsight 2020, maybe um, when you wanna go and just make sure there's no leak, it's your choice, but maybe you wanna test it with the cover off so that you can see if it's dripping or not. But um, I filled the tank nearly to the top so that there's no question as to whether there's enough gas in there to reach the line when you're testing. So it's in the off position, 12 o'clock, you move to three o'clock, and uh, leave that on there. So, and of course, if you've got a pretty bad drip, whether the, the plate is on there or not, I would imagine that you'll be able to see that. But you did a good job in both getting the hose back on um, as well as putting the clamp on. And then of course, tightening that up snug with the nut and the rubber grommet. You should be good to go. 
Hopefully this video was helpful to you and now you have a functioning on off. Just be careful, especially when it's cold and you got the gloves on, that you're just gentle with this on off because this is the other thing that can break is the actual plastic housing. So thanks for watching. Hopefully this saved you some time and money. Bye-bye.